You are listening to Men of Abundance, episode 136 with Timothy Stroud. How are you living your dash? Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What's up, what's up, Men of Abundance? I am Wally Carmichael, your host and founder of the Men of Abundance podcast, the Pay It Forward community. Man, today we are having a conversation with one of my old army buddies. This cat is simply amazing. He has got so much stuff going on. He's got more energy than five guys put together, including myself. You're absolutely going to dig this conversation. We talk about so much stuff, and Tim is going to take you to a place that you did not even know existed. I promise you that. Now, if you're brand new to Men of Abundance, this is your first episode that you're listening to. You're in for a huge treat to begin with, but I want to personally welcome you to Men of Abundance, and I would like to do that in person. I like sending videos to everybody who connects with me on social media, primarily on Facebook. I generally send it in a private message, a personal thank you for connecting. I do it on Instagram as well, but I have to say I do not get a chance to do it for every single person that connects with me on social media because over the last two to three months, my social media connections have greatly increased. And that's a tribute of this show and all of you sharing Men of Abundance. In either case, I look forward to connecting with you and getting to know you a little bit more. And if there's anything I can do, just let me know. That being said, make sure you share this episode. Make sure you share, I can't even talk. Make sure you share menofabundance.com and anything else Men of Abundance with others in your network because if you're enjoying this, others will too. And I'm not just here for entertainment. I'm here to try to get you to change over from the scarcity mindset to a mindset of abundance so that you can live your life of abundance. And your first step of living a life of abundance is to pay it forward to somebody else. You can simply do that by sharing men of abundance with other people. And guys, don't leave out the ladies. About 30, 38% of the viewers and listeners to men of abundance are women. They are getting something out of it, I know, because they're leaving me ratings and reviews on iTunes and other podcast players and on the website. And I greatly appreciate that. Because by you leaving a rating and review... That's pushing men of abundance up higher in the search engines so more people, 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 pickles, more people can find men of abundance when they're searching for anything to do with scarcity mindset, abundance mindset, positive mindset, living a life of abundance, living an amazing life, or men's groups. And I love reading those ratings and reviews. As a matter of fact, I haven't checked today if there are any new ratings and reviews. So let me go check that real quick. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back and I am happy to say that there is another rating and review that I can read to you right now. It's a five-star review. It's from Aaron Keith Hawkins, and it says, A transformational gift. I get extremely grateful when I find a resource, podcast, book, or anything else where the presenter exudes authenticity, passion, and knowledge. Wally is one of those people who make you want to meet more people like him. Fortunately, he does an excellent job at curating guests who share similar values and qualities. This podcast provides a priceless resource for any man or woman, quite frankly, committed to a life of progress and impact and who appreciates learning from the experiences and powerful lessons of others who are doing the same. This is a legitimately valuable and transformational show. You're appreciated, Wally. Man, I <laughs> I truly, truly appreciate those comments. I appreciate that rating. And man, that makes that just makes my day right there. Thanks a lot. And for those of you who want to leave a rating and review, I would love to read your rating for my personal reasons. I love the feedback. It just lets me know that somebody's out there actually listening. And I will read it here on the show as well. So you can leave your rating and review by simply going to menofabundance.com forward slash 136 of this show and right underneath the podcast player there's an itunes button a leave leave a review button clamor it you can download it you can listen on stitcher and subscribe on any of the android apps that way you don't miss a single episode 
All right, man, let me make an attempt at introducing you to our featured guest today. And I say attempt because, my goodness, his bio is simply impressive. But the basics is this. Timothy Stroud is a former combat medic of the United States Army. He and I served together in Germany, and he has also served in Kosovo, Kuwait, Iraq, throughout Operation Iraqi Freedom. And as you'll hear him talk about, as he started his transition back into civilian life, he started a seven-year relationship with a leadership expert, Mr. Paul J. Meyer. Now, Tim has not only excelled in the military, he also excelled as a student at Grand Canyon University, finished his education by utilizing the post 9-11 GI Bill. Tim has volunteered in his community and worked in collaboration with the state of Texas in multiple programs, many of which to better understand the early signs of post-traumatic stress and how to successfully get veterans and family members connected with resources. Tim has lobbied Texas Congress alongside the VSOs that he supported for more education benefits in Austin, Texas and San Antonio to the Veteran Affairs and Military Installation committee. Now listen guys, I can go on and on because there are like two or three paragraphs in his bio, but I'm going to post his bio in the show notes at menofabundance.com forward slash 136. I'm telling you, you're going to want to go read this bio and see all of this stuff. It's going to wear you out. I don't know how he finds the time, but I'm glad that he found the time to be here with us today. Men of Abundance, it is my honor to introduce you to Mr. Timothy Stroud. Tim, welcome to Men of Abundance, man. How you doing? Wally, I am unbelievable, and I have references. Thank you for asking, sir. And you? <laughs> and you haven't changed one little bit, man. You have so much energy. It just I just feed off of it. It's unbelievable. I'm doing great. I appreciate it. Man, I, I can't wait to um, uh, connect with some of the other guys like, like this one as well. We need to plan a reunion and do a... Uh, uh, a Germany meetup. That'd be great. We definitely do. We absolutely do. Where are you at in the world today? I'm in Houston, Texas, and you're over in Hawaii? I am. Yeah, I've been here for about nine years. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, goodness, man, I mean, who have you been in contact with since the, what, late 90s? You know what? Here's the funny thing about it. When I moved, I made the Mecca from Fort Hood down to Austin and I started helping out veterans and decided to relocate to Houston because there's a stronger and larger veteran population here. Just as we uh, took that oath as medics in the, the military to do the most good for the most people, that's what I wanted to do. So I moved over here and I popped on Facebook. I go, who's over here that I know? Anybody? And come to find out, Nehemiah McGowan, remember him as one of the uh, mechanics? Yes. Yeah, he lived three miles uh, from where I just moved over in Houston. Amazing, amazing. And so we connected and then just started putting the pieces together and, and started building from there and stayed in touch with quite a few people via Facebook, mm -hmm. but only about a handful of people because, you know, the military, as soon as we're out, whoop, all four corners, there we go. Absolutely. Do you remember Rick Watson? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I stay the, in touch with Rick. Yeah, he's the CSM out here in uh, the Pacific region. I'll be dang. I, yeah. I knew he was traveling, but I didn't know where exactly he was. Yeah, he's right here. I'm looking at, at his office right now, down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> That's That means I need to make a trip out there. We can do a reunion uh, over in Hawaii. Oh, my goodness. That would be amazing. Yeah, there's a couple other folks out here that's been in and out, actually, from, from Germany. But, um, hey, you know, I like to start the show out the way I start out every single morning. And I know you're going to answer this question just phenomenally. And that is, what do you have to be grateful for today? You know, I, I love when you had the, uh, the flow sheet that you sent me. And it says an attitude of gratitude. Because when I was getting out of the military, I connected with a mentor. That's Mr. Paul J. Meyer. And he connected me to tons of of resources and people that were just living at a higher level. And so I'm so thankful that I had a mentor that guided me to greater decisions and a path where I didn't know where I was going to wind up because, I'm, as you mentioned earlier, I had all this energy. I just didn't know how to direct it. So I'm definitely thankful for him. And he passed away about six years ago, but there's not a day that doesn't go by that I don't think about that guy and the impact he's had on my life. Man, well, speaking of the impact on your life, I'm telling you what, I knew you from Germany. But as with anything else, that was, you know, 
a long time ago. <laughs> that was the late nineties. Yeah. And so many of ago. us, yeah, just a few. And so many of us have completely changed. Uh, some have stayed pretty much the same, but so many of us have changed in the, in that, that we've done so many things since then. Many of us have just done amazing things. You sent me this list of uh, just a few things that you've done. And if I was to read through this, it would probably take up half the show. You have been extremely busy, and you were busy in the military as an army medic as it was. But since you've been out, you've done so much more and preparing to get out. And I read through some of that stuff. I provided some of that stuff before we got started here. That's what you do. Here on Men of Abundance, we want to get to know who you are and who is the man behind the abundance. So let's get a little bit personal. Tell us a little bit more about yourself on a personal level. Well, thanks, Wally. I appreciate that. And for those that are listening, you know, thank you for, for tuning in and sharing your time with us because it is definitely our most precious resource because once you spend it, you can't get it back. When my mentor, two weeks before he passed away, he was a multi-billionaire. When he passed away, he left an estate about $2.5 billion. He told me that he would have given away every dime that he had and had ever earned so he could have one healthy year left. So everybody listening, I really appreciate your time and uh, and, and allowing us to, to share this time with you. And so with that, um, I, I grew up in a small farming community, Wally, and I don't know if I ever shared that with you, but my father was killed in the line of duty as a police officer after he got out of the military and did three tours in Vietnam. And so I was five. I remember going to his funeral and telling my mom that, I was the man of the house and I was going to take care of her and I was going to, you know, do all the things that dad did, man. It just made her cry even, even more. And I couldn't figure out why. And then it finally hit me. Dad's not coming back home. And even though I'd seen him on television because he was featured on the local news, they called him a hero and he looked so handsome in his uniform. The guy that I called dad, I only got to spend five years with. And so as mom drifted, she sought out a partner and, you know, God bless her. She really wanted to do right by my sister and me and get a positive male influence into our lives. Well, my grandfather, great guy, served in the Air Force, so a lot of military in my family. Um, he was kind of withdrawn. He wasn't the touchy-feely, I'm going to show you how to enjoy life kind of guy. He was the one that would show you life secrets, but he was very much an introvert and so that's one of the things that propelled me forward was to reach out to others and and share so we grew up po wally we couldn't afford the or on poor and so uh (laughs) we really got out and my sister and i and just made a lot of friends and i think that was very important to us um as we were a military family then all of a sudden we weren't and so we got to put down some roots, which was great, in a small farming community. And the values I learned there were absolutely amazing. But it wasn't until, pardon me, I got into the Army that I got to see those values in action. Because, you know, way back when, um, prior to the Internet, if you wanted to go to Paris and you couldn't afford it, you went down to the local library and you escaped through there and you visited through pictures and words. And so that became another part of my world when mom made a bad choice and married a guy who wasn't the guy that I would have picked as as my father. He was abusive verbally, physically, and emotionally. And I could not trust him. And I think that was one of the, the largest things in my life right then is I knew I had to escape. For me, escapism, and it's kind of funny that Spider-Man is actually debuting today on the 7th of July, is that I read a lot of comic books. And Spider-Man was one of my favorites. Here he was. He was a high school guy. Um, he had all this power. I had a lot of energy. He didn't know what to do with it. Um, and he had just recently lost somebody in his life. And so there was um, uh, a bridge there. I could equate my life to his. And so I watched a lot of Three Stooges, and I worked a lot and read books. And so that really helped me out with my work ethic. So when I went into the military, um, I found that I wasn't alone. A lot of people have had different lives. And I think that's one of the things that made me a pretty good medic, Wally. I mean, I was never the best at 
giving IVs or doing the uh, assessments. Lord knows I wasn't the best at doing PMCSs on uh, the Humvees each Monday in Germany. <laughs> but uh, I could connect. I, I became the connector guy. So if somebody wanted something done or they needed a service or a product, if I didn't know it, I could find it out pretty quickly and without being intrusive into somebody else's life. And so I used that uh, or those skills to propel me forward when I got into uh, my civilian life. Yeah, I can definitely see that. And I remember that energy back then. And, man, thanks for sharing that, Tim. Seriously, I mean, that's not something easy to share, to, to deal with uh, at such a young age. And God bless you uh, just <laughs> to tell your mom that and then to, um, you know, just continue on with your energy and, and sharing that with the world as being an Army medic. Simply amazing. So, Thank you. I you know, the I would consider that quite the kick in the gut moment. Uh, and, you know, people look at somebody like you and uh, we have, you know, we're all in the same circles. We know a lot of the same people. And somebody looks at you and says, somebody like that, Timothy Stroud, he's never had a kick in the gut moment. He's everything goes perfect for him and it's kind of sickening and I'm tired of his energy. But it, <laughs> everything's just so perfect in his world. All right. And and I can just I, I just see it that this is me talking. And I remember back then I thought I was a pretty high energy type of guy till I met you. <laughs> and I was like, where the hell is this dude coming from? Right. But it was it was so easy to feed off of. But then at the same time, it's easy for somebody to say that guy doesn't have problems. He doesn't have issues and not knowing where you came from and knowing all of that background. It's just very enlightening to feel that and to and for you to share that with us because it's important for men to understand that all of us have kick in the gut moments they're similar not the same but mm -hmm. it's still just as important to the individual and it's what you do in those moments that really make you different and and bring you up out of that funk so other than you know just being who you are and growing up and realizing that what was it that even during the time when you had your stepdad, if you will, that was so abusive. Um, what was it about you that made you lift yourself up out of that? Whew, man, that's going down um, memory lane right there. You know, I, I've always considered myself above anything, Wally, a survivor. I wanted to make sure that I was alive tomorrow to enjoy everything I could. And then I started thinking, that's pretty selfish. What if I'm not helping anybody get to where they need to uh, they need to be? And so I started talking to my buddies, and they were going through struggles as well. And so when my stepfather would uh, physically abuse uh, me or my mother, um, I I took a stand. Uh, it got to a point where I didn't want that to where somebody could oppress us and uh, make us a prisoner in our own home or our own minds. And so I took steps to um, to get out of that situation. It took a while, um, but actually I uh, did that one. So that just added to my post-traumatic stress because I had that before I went into the Army Wally. And if you don't resolve that, it's it's kind of like a cancer. I mean, it's going to eat you from within, and that's one of the worst ways to die. I've seen people just wither and die, whether it's a physical or a mental ailment. That cancer will grow. And so you have to address it. And so that's one of the things I did when I got out of the military is that I, I talked to people. I was one of the first peer-to-peer -peer support facilitators in the state of Texas because when I got out, um, I was stop lost. And so I wasn't supposed to go to Iraq. My contract was up. I was less than 40 days out, and I had 35 days worth of terminal leave. And so I was in a five-day window. Well, um, war happened, and I went. And I went happily because I had 156 guys underneath my medical care. But there was a lot of stuff that happened on both sides of the equation when we were in Kuwait and Iraq. And there are things that uh, people shouldn't see. But you and I both know war's not pretty. It's not won by the generals and the elected officials in D.C. or on the Hill in whichever state that you're living in. It's won or lost by the men and women that put on the uniform and travel across the globe to make sure that uh, freedom is won. 
And so with that, man, I brought back a lot of baggage and I tried to squeeze it in that little tiny trunk, a uh, little tiny box in my brain where I put everything else. It wouldn't fit Wally. And I was never aggressive where I would hurt anybody, but I became irritable. Um, even to this day, when there's conflict, um, I tend to be that introvert and I, I don't want to talk about it. But I've learned that I need to talk to somebody on a professional basis. Sometimes it's peer to peer, which is great. And I can just vent and it's done, which is, which is amazing. So we can share that common experience like you talked about. And we just move forward, take a step, good to go. But sometimes I got to talk to somebody that has more education and more understanding because they've either gone down that path or they've studied to um, a point where they know I should put my next step. And that means a lot to me that I can trust somebody to do that. And so I kind of turned that into a vocation where now I work with over 400 veteran service organizations and I help them both mentally, physically, and spiritually because you have to tie them all in together for your uh, complete um, wheel of power, if you will. If it's out of balance, if one spoke on a scale of one to 10 is a six and that's spiritual and your physical is um, a nine because you work out all the time and your financial is a three because you just claimed bankruptcy or you're going through a rough time, that is gonna be a bumpy ride. And they don't all have to be nines or tens, but you have to find that balance because you only have so much time, so much bandwidth to live the life that we're actually meant to. And so, man, I still struggle with that. Um, I remember one of my worst kicks in the gut was when I got divorced um, because my uh, ex-wife, still love her, great person. We were just not compatible on a level that two people should be when they got married. I won't say we got married for the wrong reasons because um, we loved each other and just a beautiful person. It's just we both rushed it and we didn't have the right reasons, I feel, uh, to get married. And we have two amazing daughters out of it, but we were all living here in the States. And that was the worst feeling. I I've, I've buried my mother, my father, my grandparents on both sides and my great grandparents uh, and uh, all of my aunts and uncles except for one. And this was one of the worst feelings ever in my life when I had to watch my daughters leave and board the plane without me, not knowing when I was gonna see them again. Man, there was a lot of dark thoughts there, Wally. And I'm glad to say that I did not self-medicate or go down a, a, a trail to where I would have uh, wound up within the system. However, it was a dark time for me because I was not on the path that I needed to be to help myself or anybody else that would have come along the way. Again, I was very selfish. And man, looking back, well, in the past, with my 2020 vision, oh man, I would have moved this around and I would have done this or said that uh, at this time and made it all perfect. But I don't have that option. I can tell you right now, going forward, as my daughters will be here in a week traveling from Germany, is that even though I've been divorced almost six years, I've called them every single day. I love my girls and I love the relationship that we have. Um, and in looking at it, I don't know if we would have the same relationship on the level that we have now if Angela and I would have stayed together. Simply because when I was talking to the counselor, um, and I had gone to a counselor for about two years before um, we got divorced because Angela did not want to go to counseling. And I begged, I pleaded, I was not in a position of power at that time and I could not reach her on a love level to where she wanted to go and experience that and take that step forward as well. And so it just got to be um, uh, very frustrating for me. And as I look at that um, in the past, uh, the counselor said, Tim, why are you still married? And, and I was like, well, doc, I don't want my kids to be from a broken home. And she looked at me and she's like, would you rather your kids be from a broken home or live in a broken home. Mm. Man, mm. I just broke down and mm. I cried. And that was another low point. And that's when I knew that if I was going to grow, um, I had to take the steps 
to where I could actually do that. And sadly, it wasn't with um, the the woman that I married. But now we have a great relationship. We are better friends now than when we were married. And my daughters and I, oh my goodness, we get to travel the globe, and they uh, come visit in the summer and the uh, and then the winter. But I go to Germany three times a year, and that has inspired me to where we get to go explore and see things that probably we've never would have seen before. Yeah, wow. Thanks for sharing that. Seriously, I mean, and I and I totally get that. And the just the question that the counselor asked you that hit home. <laughs> I can imagine yeah. that because we've been through some rough times. I've been married 24 years, but and my wife always says, just like you explained it, you laid it out right there. Tracy always says that a marriage or a divorce is really like losing your favorite family member. I mean, in many cases, it's like somebody just died. Uh, it's very mm-hmm. difficult. But then to watch your children, you know, move so far away on top of that. But I remember, I'm thinking back when my parents got divorced, it really brought me and my brother together much, much closer. We were kind of strained relationship, as brothers are. You know, we fought all the time. But after our parents divorced, something miraculous happened. We never fought after that. <laughs> because wow. he went with her. And he went. My brother went with my dad, and I went with my mom and stepdad. We split up. In the same sti- in the same state, but in the same city in Phoenix. But uh, it did bring us closer older? together. I'm older by two years. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So and it's it's unique in that way. I actually have had a couple on the show talking about this, and I'm evidently I'm uh, kind of different in that regard uh, when it comes to that. But anyhow, well, thanks for sharing that. I definitely appreciate that. And you know. It just goes to show again, you know, you you had to make that hard decision for the better of your family, uh, and it was what was the difference? Are you gonna it, the 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 family was already broken anyway, so you mm-hmm. might as well make the best decision for the girls. And right. for your and I got to say, Wally, their education over in Europe, ah, oh, man, you would, you're like me. We served, and we want to think that America, America, mm-hmm. is the number one in everything. But we know in education, heck, man, we're like 27th or 28th in math. Mm-hmm. And the education the girls have gotten over in Germany, holy smokes. And, uh, Amber speaks English, German, Spanish, French, and a little bit of Vietnamese. Yeah. And then Jacqueline is right behind her. It's truly a shame. We America is truly missing the boat when it comes to education. And personally, the... It, I just call it arrogance. I just think that I've I've traveled the world as you have, and I see how Americans act in other cultures and other countries, and it's like, what do you mean you don't speak English? What do you mean you, you know, do you not understand what I'm saying? I'm like, dude, you're not in America no more, man. They probably do speak English, but they're not going to speak English to you because you're an ass. You know, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? It's right. just, it's just the way I see it. You know, because the arrogance that we just think everybody should conform to our way of life, and it's just not the case. When you travel, you travel to experience other ways of life. Nailed I do it, anyway. Right there. You know, yeah, and and I agree with you. Our education system it needs a lot of work, and it has for many years. We're not in the industrial age anymore, America. Yeah, have you seen uh, the TED Talk with Sir Ken Robinson? I have not seen that one. I watch a lot of TED Talks and listen to a lot of TED Talks about education specifically, but I have not heard that one. Yeah, you'll want to um, uh, watch that one and circle back. It's a great program, and it's one of the, the most watched TED Talks. I had the unique opportunity to actually hire him, and we flew him uh, to Central Texas. We teamed up with all of the chambers of commerce within the area, and we got five or six of them. Every body ponied up a little bit of money, and we had him come in and educate us on why we needed to change and how our archaic system needed to uh, advance and improve. Otherwise, we are going to be left behind. Mm-hmm. It, was a, it was a great program. I'm definitely going to check that out. And I will also, for the benefit of you guys out there listening, I'll have that linked up in the show notes at menofabundance.com. Just ter- search Tim in the search menu and it'll pop right up. But, um, yeah, I definitely love watching stuff like that. And I'll definitely take a look at that and have it linked up in the show notes. So speaking of that, you know, you do a lot of amazing things. I saw you the other day standing outside the Houston VA 
beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful facility. You're talking about the parking area, how they put PV panels up there, and the employees are parking. Just amazing things. And I'm, and I'm, th- I'm part of the VA system now. And out here in Hawaii, I, I really don't have to go that often, but I haven't had a really bad experience. But one of my neighbors who's got ALS has had, he was telling me stories this weekend while we was out uh, on the beach this weekend, as we usually are. He's like, he's just telling me horror stories. Him and his wife are telling me horror stories about various VAs, but then beautiful, amazing stories about other VAs uh, in other parts of the nation. And it's just not consistent across the board, but you're doing... a really really good things for veterans in general and working quite a bit with the VA can you talk a little bit about that in your experience yeah absolutely Wally and you know it actually stemmed from our time of uh, when we we're in Germany of uh, just banding together and wanting to to um, uplift each other for uh, while we're in deployment remember when we uh, had the uh, army wall of fame when we were in Kosovo oh absolutely Man, that was a blast. So the the project for everyone listening was that uh, we were tired of listening to the Michael Moores of the world telling us how horrible we were for serving in the military, why we should not not be deployed even on um, the missions, which was a peacekeeping mission because we went in after K-4, that, uh, man, it just got disheartening. And uh, when you get guys with a mouthpiece like that, sometimes it brings us down. And I was like, there's got to be Hollywood types and professional athletes that support us. So I started reaching out and using the free mail system that we had while we were deployed, was able to send out hundreds of letters beginning, and it actually turned into thousands. And people started writing back, everybody from George Bush, the um, Hugh Hefner, who actually served in the United States Army at Camp Hood, when it, uh, at Fort Hood when it was Camp Hood. He served from 1946 to 1948 as an infantry clerk. Dave Thomas, the founder of Wendy's, mm-hmm. um, and tons and tons of uh, supporters. We built this wall from actors and actresses and athletes and motivational and elected people. And everybody would come in uh, our talk just to look to see which pictures were up this week. So it was an amazing time. And it, it uh, motivated me to do more. We actually built one of those at Fort Hood. And I have it on permanent display there. Um, But that was only one part of it. I wanted to find resources that veterans could actually use when they got out. And I love the legacy groups. So when we talk about those, those are going to be uh, the VFW, the DAV, the American Legion, the um, uh, Jewish War Veterans, great organizations. But today's veteran, as they transition out of the military, a lot of us don't identify with them because the the bar is smoky, um, it, it's not updated, and so we counsel them. We actually tell them, and, and we've uh, gone to the top of the VFW chain, and just say, hey, look, make a section of your VFW, make it smoke-free, put in some coffee, sell us uh, the coffee, we'll pay for it, and put in free Wi-Fi. Basically, make it a mini Starbucks. They'll flock, and the ones that are doing it are reaping the wards in membership. And you'll see reports of VFWs closing left and right because the values in the membership, not in their bank accounts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so moving forward, um, I figured out that if you've got a problem, you better have at least two solutions, kind of like being a, a non-com in, in the military. You can't just gripe about something. And so when I found stuff that wasn't working, I saw my my brothers and sisters posting that they had long waits at the emergency room at the VA. There was parking problems. There was issues of getting their medications when they were on vacation uh, or when they had relocated. Well, I would start going up the chain. And so I started talking to the people at the VA. And next thing you know, I'm in front of the director of the VA. And we have a great session. Now we're on a first name basis. I um, have his cell phone and we talk about real solutions that we can make for our veterans and our family members and that's not unique to the VA most of the organizations that I work with are in the business to help out others and some of them you'll find Wally that are in there just to make money and that water seeks its own level they'll quickly filter out very quickly but we work when I say we um, I'm at Easter Seals And the team I've built there, we work with over 400 veteran service organizations. 
and we actually just did a uh, video conference today, our first one. We did it on Zoom instead of Skype. But what we do is we bring real issues from veterans that have been um, connected with us, and we find solutions for solutions for them in the next 24 hours. So one of the guys that we had today, he received an OTH, other than honorable discharge. Went through a tough time when he got out of the military and the Corps, but he started his own business and he was counseled, went through the entrepreneur program, great success story, and he's flipping houses and doing all these great things, having multiple streams of income. He goes on vacation, somebody breaks into his house, steals all of his equipment and his tools and sets him back $20,000. Within 24 hours, we got this guy and his 18-month-old son housing, food, clothing, and got him lined up for another job because he couldn't do what he was currently doing because he lost $20,000 worth of tools. Mm -hmm. And so that's a great success story, as we know. The problem to that is that there seems to be a lack of fluid access to care that is already out there. I mean, it's no longer 1972 and we're getting back from deployments and people are spitting on us. It's a sexy time to be a veteran right now. And there's tons of resources. We just got to make sure that the veteran and the family members know where they can find them. And one of the organizations that I'm working with is United Way. They're getting ready to kickstart this month one of their huge programs, and I'll, I'll definitely follow up with you, Wally, and give you all that information so your uh, veteran and your military listeners will have those resources. They're going to have a paradigm shift of the way that we access health care outside of the VA. Now, we'll also add in the VA resources because when you talk to the people who actually work at the VA and love their jobs, man, you can tell how passionate they are. It's just that that system has gotten so large and so many people have not connected with the resources they need. They've gotten a bad name. And so coming down the pike, there will be a um, some resources outside of the VA. Legislation has already been drafted. And so when it comes through, you'll have access to health care outside of the VA because currently they run two different programs. I think it's called Target 30 and Target 40, if I'm not mistaken, Wally. And it simply states that if you live more than 40 miles from a VA, you can go to another resource and get that uh, medical care that you need, and the VA will pay for it. Then also, if you need a resource at the VA and you live within the, uh, the allotted miles around, but it's going to take you more than 30 days to receive that care, you also can seek uh, outward help. And so what they're going to do is connect with other providers that can give you the resources that you need. Like right now, the, the VA in Houston, they're very open. They are short on trained psychiatrists. Well, that's what we have, and we specialize in the mental health arena with Goodwill. There's also Given Hour and tons of resources. And so through United Way, we're going to put those resources all on one site. So not only regionally, statewide, but nationally, people are going to be able to uh, get those resources. Because if you ever decide to move away from Hawaii and you come over to the Lone Star State, you may be lost in the sauce while you're going to be trying to figure out where the resources are that you had on the island. And that's it's pretty finite over there. If you don't have it on this island, you better hope it's on the next island, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and to lay it down, Texas is one of the best states for veterans. Hawaii, not so much. Not not, not really a whole lot, uh, to be quite honest with you, as far as state programs are concerned. But there are, are quite a few organizations over here. And, guys, I want to make this relevant to everybody right now. We're talking a lot about veterans because – not only are Tim and I veterans, we're veterans who serve together, and Tim is just doing amazing things for veterans. But the, what I want to point out, and the reason why I'm having this conversation with Tim on the Men of Abundance podcast is because of exactly what he said. He saw, even when, and to make it clear, um, I wasn't in Kosovo. I didn't move forward to Kosovo. I was in Albania with everybody, but then when we got my PCS before we moved into Kosovo, I had to come back Uh and uh, let you guys go on and play that game, uh, go into the into the Super Bowl on that one. But um, 
even back then, and as long as I've known Tim, he's always been that guy that sees a problem and, like he said, finds two solutions to it or more. And then he pursues it. He went after it. And that's what an abundance thinker does. That's what an abundance thought leader does is he or she will see a problem and then find a solution for that problem and then follow through with that problem, not just say, Here, here's the problem, here's the solution, I'm out. That's not the way to do it. you got to follow through with it. And, Tim, have you ever heard of the um, Veteran Resources podcast? Yeah, I've heard of it, but I haven't tuned in. Is, um, is that one of yours? It's not one of mine, but it's a good friend of mine, Jeremy Paris. I'm going to get you in contact. He is Please definitely going to want to have you on the show. I've been on his show. He's been on my show. Um, and Jeremy is just an amazing guy. He's got a great story, which we'll get into later. And guys, I'll have that linked up in the show notes as well. And Tim, please make sure you send me those resources because I'll also have all of that linked up in the show notes. I will, Wally. I appreciate it. Anything else that we needed to go over today? Well, just uh, I want to pay it forward real quick. Let's do it. Jump in there. Outstanding. So give our abundant leaders one to three actionable steps that they can take today. The first thing I would do is... Um, I'm going to share something that my mentor shared with me. Again, this was Paul J. Meyer, and he was a veteran, uh, and he was one of the, he is the most successful veteran that I've ever met. And when uh, I told him that I wanted to do something, I wanted to pay it forward, and I wanted to create a charity in my father's name, he's like, man, that's great, Tim. He's like, hold on a second. Um, I need to find something on the calendar. And I said, okay. And so he, he pulls out his calendar, and he had 13 people on staff at his home office. And so we're, we're sitting there, and one of the ladies walks by. She starts smiling really big. I'm like, uh-oh, something's going on. One of the other ladies walk by. She starts giggling. And I say, Paul, what's going on? He's like, hey, Tim, focus. I need you to help me find this date. I go, what is it? He's like, well, I'm looking for one day. I go, what is it? Is it a birthday? Is it an anniversary? Special day? What's going on? He's like, I'm looking for one day. He goes through the calendar. He's like, oh, couldn't find it. I was like, Paul, <laughs> what are you looking for? He's like, Tim, one day. You keep telling me one day you're going to start this organization. When is it? And I was like, oh, called on the carpet. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he helped me set goals. So he helped me set smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. And he introduced me to Ken Blanchard, and he showed me how to walk the halls and, and ex- inspect what I expect from my team. And he said, um, how much is it going to take to build your dream and set some great goals? And I, man, I didn't know Wally. So I took a swag at it and I said, $2,000. He's like, okay. And he said, Jane, would you get my checkbook for me? And she's like, sure. She's like, which company? Cause he owned 33 companies when I met him and he's like our personal account. And she said, Oh, so he writes a check, and I'm like, oh, he's writing me a big fat check for probably ten grand instead of two because he's my buddy. And he hands me a check for $1,000. Still a good amount. Mm-hmm. So it's half of what I asked for. He's like, Tim, before I hand you this check, I want you to think about something. I go, what? He's like, I want you to match it. What are you thinking about? I go, Paul, I'm thinking I just got out of the military, and I don't have $1,000. He's like, well, I guess your dream's not big enough. Do you have $100? I said, yes, I do. He said, find nine others, connect with them, make sure they have your passion, and there's your executive board. Now go build it. And Mm -hmm. to date, Wally, we've given away almost $600,000 to the Colleen Police Department Law Enforcement uh, Assistance Fund. And so within that is some of of, of the pay it forwards. What I'm challenging those who are listening today is to find a mentor, number one. Number two, set some uh, some BHAGs, some uh, some <laughs> big, uh, yeah, you know what I'm mm-hmm. talking about. Carry audacious goals. Yeah, there we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and goals aren't there so you can achieve them on a daily basis and cross them off. They're there to inspire you and challenge you to get to something amazing that you wouldn't have been able to reach to. And so Paul showed me this by harnessing my energy. He said, Tim, you got some of the biggest energy that I've seen, uh, and I've been around the world a few times. And I said, well, thank you. And he's like, you're going to fail. I said, excuse me? He's like, you have to focus. You could take your energy and put it into a light system 
um, with ambient lighting, the fluorescent lights, and it would light up a room. I go, yeah, that's pretty good, right? He's like, not if you want to cut through steel. You need to focus that energy so you can harness it into a laser and cut through steel. That's your focus. And I said, okay, great. So my second challenge to everyone is to, uh, I'm sorry, mentor, set goals, then focus. And then the other one, uh, I got two more, is to take massive action on your goals. And the fifth one is share your successes and failures with others by banding and, and making sure that you're doing the right things. Uh, you may have a moral compass, but every now and then uh, it happens because guess what? We're human. You need people to keep you on track. If it's a road to recovery, a road to success, it's only done best when you have other people pulling towards the same direction. That's why we get personal trainers and we pay them hundreds or thousands of dollars in the gym or a life coach or a nutritionist. We only need uh, just a compatibility partner, somebody to keep us on, uh, honest. And the Army is great. You had a battle buddy. And so they kept you uh, right where you needed to be. So with, with those five things, I think it will set you up for a great amount of success to where you know at the end of the day or the week or the month that you've accomplished more than you ever thought you could. Man, that's huge. Thanks for sharing that. That is really, really great action steps. Guys, take heed to that. Take action. What daily habits make the biggest impact in your life, Tim? You know, it really, uh, it's not the, the large things. Um, it's setting the small goals to achieve my large one. I've got 10 pounds of fat, Wally, i got to get rid of. I am not in bikini mode right now, so I'm taking the daily steps, and it's a little at a time. Because if you would tell me right now, Tim, you need to do 10,000 push-ups. And I'm like, what? I can't do 10,000 push-ups to, to lose that weight. But if you say, hey, Tim, I need you to do 250 push-ups a day for 10 days or for uh, 30 days. Now it's manageable. So I celebrate the small milestones each day. And I enjoy it. Man, I have tons of fun. Um, it's like uh, when we had the Army Wall of Fame or when we're on deployment. Man, I, I loved it because it was a new experience and I got to do something that I didn't do before. And so for me, that's worth celebrating. And I hope that made sense for my daily impact. Yeah, absolutely. Real talk there. I appreciate that. What are you reading or listening to now that you'd recommend to our abundant leaders and why? Well, I mentioned Paul J. Meyer and Ken Blanchard. I would definitely look into those resources. Paul and Ken co-authored quite a few books. One of the ones that I've read, reread, and read again is called No Can Do. That's K-N-O-W. They both co-wrote that with uh, Dick Rui. And it's one of these books where Paul taught me, and I, I speed read, so I read tons of books. But he said to always make sure that you're rereading the books that have the success tips and tricks that match up with your values. And just stay on those. You don't have to read 12 different books. You know, um, have your, uh, your, your base. And so if, if you're a man of God, read the word. And then also read something to augment it. And I got to tell you, I've had so much fun of writing in the Bible, and then also these books, because I get to co-author now. And Paul showed me that. It's like when I go to a lecture and I, I go, uh, I, I'm taking notes, don't write down what they're trying to say. You can record it these days. Write down what it makes you feel, or what it makes you think of. That way it will spur your imagination and you can take action on it. So Ken Blanchard and Paul J. Meyer. Great advice. I, I really love that. And I tell guys all the time, I just recently had this conversation. A guy was telling me about how many books he's read and all this other information he's ingested. I said, great. What have you learned? And he really couldn't he really couldn't share anything that he learned. Therefore, I know for a fact he didn't take action on any of it. So I said, which one of those books really, really resonated with you? Just exactly what you just said. But the thing that I really like about what you just said is you put emotions to it. And when you put emotions to it, that's where the learning starts. That's the retention starts to happen. I love it. Well, you nailed it. Let's uh, I, let me dovetail on that real quick, mm -hmm. Wally. If um, if I said, hey, I'm going to send you a thousand dollars, but I need you to um, 
be on the uh, the um, Honest Engine with me, and if you tell me what you ate on April 9th, 2003, I'll send you a thousand dollars. How safe is my money? Yeah, pretty safe. Yeah, but I can tell you with complete probity that I had a 10 ounce medium rare, rare steak, two beers, um, a chicken quesadilla, and a slice of um, chocolate walnut brownie with a scoop of ice cream and chocolate on top. And why is that? And the reason I remember that because um, uh, that was my birthday. And the day before we deployed to Iraq, and so you got to have it as vivid, vivid as you can in your imagination, so you remember it. Otherwise, you have to go through a rote system of of doing something at least six times. And so that's why I advocate on the books, reading them six times. Mm, very good, love it. So, what do you feel holds most people back from living a true life of abundance and taking so that action that you've taken in your life thus far? I can tell you, resonating in my mind is only one word that holds people back, and that's fear. Mm. It's either fear of, fear of failure, fear of success, of being alone, and so whatever they're scared of. And it's amazing. It will cripple people. Uh, it will put them in a place where where they were in abundance of now of scarcity. And that's more, that's uh, exactly opposite of what we were created for. I, I believe that fear is the opposite of love. Uh, and so if you embrace that love that we, uh, you know you get it when you watch a, a movie or you hug somebody uh, like an old army buddy or your, your wife or your kids and you just feel that you're like, oh man, that feels so great. I mean, that's what we're here for. And that's living with abundance. That and being good stewards of the time that we're given, we know that we get to relax, but come on, do you really need to spend three hours or four hours watching TV per day? No, nope, we know the answer. Sorry if you have ABC or NBC as a sponsor though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah a little, I got it. So what does living a life of abundance mean to you, Tim? You know, I think we touched on it a, a couple times, Wally, but the, the bottom line it is being able to experience life. And when you go to the cemeteries and um, during the patriarch holidays here in Houston, we get hundreds, if not thousands of people to place flags and wreaths at the, uh, the cemetery. And you read the dates and you look at the dash. So born April 9th, 1972 dash April 16th, 2020. And you look at that, or I'll put it in past tense, uh, 2016. And you look at that, and you're like, not a bad life. That was uh, pretty good, you know, over 40 years. But how did they live it? You look at the dash, and there's a great article writ written on that. How did you live your dash? Mm -hmm. It's not how many years that you've lived here above ground. Is it how did you experience life? Did you go out? Did you travel? Did you try new things? Did you change your community? Did you change yourself? Did you experience things that you never thought you would? I can tell you right now, the military changed mine, having a mentor did, and and moving forward. Otherwise, I'd be stuck in a little tiny farming community in a position where a lot of my friends still are today and not living that life of abundance. Great answer. I've read that article, The Dash, and I it's been so long now, but I'm going to see if I can find that and have that linked up in the show notes as well. That would be really cool for guys to read. I want to reread it, re it, as a matter of fact. So we're going to close this up, Tim. I truly appreciate your time. What did we not talk about today that you want to make sure that our abundant leaders get out of our conversation? Whew. Man, I tell you what, I I'm, I love staying busy, and my, my challenge to anyone listening out here is to find five people in the next month that you want to surround yourself with because that is going to be another true metric of your success of living a life of, of abundance is reading. I mean, pick five books that will change your life. Uh, and I'll list some of those for you. I mean, I've listed a couple, but 
find five people that will stretch your imagination, stretch your wonder about life, and put propel you for, forward. Otherwise, you're never going to grow. And so I'm constantly doing that as well of finding new people that I can experience things with in my life, whether it's politics uh, or financial or physical or spiritual, uh, just finding those people in our lives and man, just keep moving forward. I'm looking forward to hearing um, other people's messages. So I'll be circling back and uh, listening to those as well. Excellent. I appreciate that. The fact is, guys, you hear me say it all the time. You are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And that's either physically with them, in their books, in their courses, whatever. And if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Woo! Look out. (laughs) I still got it. Hey, man, it was great catching up with you. We got a lot more catching up to do, you and I, on uh, on on the flip side. And that's where I'll catch you at, brother. Aloha. Thank you, brother. Aloha. All right, man. I don't feel anything else needs to be said after that conversation. Go out and live your life of abundance and make sure to pay it for it. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.